So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I remodeled this small linen closet. The inner dimensions were only about two foot by two foot, and the door opening itself is only about 17 inches wide. So um, right off the bat, I apologize, but I did not get some of the best um, angles for this because it was such a small space and the lighting was not great. But I started by removing all of the, the base trim and sanding the floor. I knew I wanted to take the floor down to its original finish because there were stains all over it and this closet itself smelled terrible which was kind of the catalyst for the design for the door I think maybe at one point it was used for a kitty litter bin or something like that so I knew I wanted to take the the floor down to its original wood and um, I'm adding a threshold there used to be carpeting up here so the door is easily about two inches too short um, and I, I had this ideal to add these decorative thresholds in parts of this house. I was going to start with the linen closet. So all I did was I put um, some straight edges against the opening of the doors and I could remove this lumber. Now this hallway will eventually be refinished as well. So that will make it a little bit easier to do the hallway because it's going to be stained a different color, kind of like the door is. You can see once I, once I have those initial pieces out, I could remove the these, these plugs. I have worked on older houses in this area, um, especially on the PA side, and I'm familiar with this flooring. It's not tongue and groove. It's just thin oak flooring that's nailed to the floor. So it came up pretty quickly. I knew what to expect before um, I started. So then once that was removed, I could remove my, my essential, essentially my fences, and I was left with that opening. And like I said, you could see how it now separates the closet from the hallway. That's basically um, what that looked like. So like I said, this closet really, it smelled terrible. There were some stains on the floor. So I used some wood bleach in order to help take out some of that smell and make the floor a little more uniform. Most of this floor is not going to show once I'm done, but I did want to remove some of those stains. I had this from an older project years and years ago, and I never ended up using it. So I already had it in the shop. It's a two part, um, some sort of chemical bleach mix from Zinzer um, and I put it on the floor I let it set overnight and it actually turned out pretty nice it removed most of those problem areas and really cleaned up the floor and I started this easily a month ago at this point and it still smells quite nice so then for the bottom portion I'm making a very quick set of shelves um, this is kind of a miniature version of built-ins I do, but I didn't get as crazy with some of the procedures I usually do for built-ins because they are so small. But basically I was making very thin shelves. I wanted to keep all of the cleaners and chemicals for cleaning the bathrooms upstairs separated from the linens and the space below that bottom shelf was basically wasted space. So I was just trimming it out with a series of shelves. Um, and that's all this is. So you can see I'm going to start by making some bases because I'm going to re-add that molding into place. And if you watch the channel, this is, like I said, similar to how I make built-ins. I usually make these out of two by sixes with screws, but these are really small. So I just used some plywood scrap I had hanging around and some brads in order to hold everything in place. Um, these will basically just lift up the the shelving it's easier to level them this way and then I could put the molding back in place to cover this so the height of this is really based off the size of the molding I took out of the closet fairly uh, simple construction for this put some braces in the middle this is a little bit of overkill I probably didn't need as much as I put in there but like I said when I have scrap like this I'd rather overbuild something than, than underbuild it and then this will be the back portion. So those three shelves in the back that make that U, I'm basically making them in three separate pieces. So you can see I have this, the, the one in the back, the one on the side, and then I can level all of these independently. And that's kind of the one of the big bonuses to doing it this way. So those are my three bases. These upper shelves were older pine with um, this contact paper on it, which luckily came off quite easily. It had a glossy finish on it, so I had to sand it down, but I wanted to reuse as much materials as possible. So that's what I did with this, the back uh, and back shelf, some of the sides, I was able to reuse this, this older pine. So I'm just ripping it down to size um, and then I could, I could sand it. 
to, like I said, this has a glossy finish on it. And this older pine doesn't necessarily have a bad smell, but it's a very distinctive smell. So I wanted to sand that down and then I primed it with kills, which is pretty good at cutting down on odors and I could start using it for my piece. Now I like to build all of my cabinetry with dados and rabbits. I find it's easier for them to, to glue up. They stay more true. And I also find it's a more structural way to do it. For something like this, if you wanna use pocket hole screws, especially um, that it, this is more than, that's more than fine for, for construction like this. But I already had my dado stack set up in my rain alarm saw. So it was pretty easy to set this up. Now all of this, like I said, is based off the dimensions. So this is about a two feet wide. So my bottom piece is two foot wide. I came in the thickness of my shelving for that dado. And then um, I could add the backer. The backer is just scrap piece of wood I had laying around the shop. And this is just a big open cubby for the back. Um, that's all that is. Most of this will be covered with the two side cubbies, which I'm making now. Those were of similar sizes, but the door is off center. So one will stick out more than the other. Um, you might notice that in the videos, it was not a construction mishap. It's just the door is not centered in the closet. So same process, this is the thickness of my sides. I was making these about five inches. I'm also gonna be adding a face frame to these. So these sides are about four and a half. I'm gonna put a, a rabbit on the top and the bottom for my top and bottom shelf. This is three quarter inch plywood, so I go about three eighths of an inch down. And then I'm gonna make a center shelf. So like I said, this shelving was based on the sizes of the bottles I was putting in there. The biggest one was a little under 12 inches. So I sized all this so I had about 12 inches worth of space in these side cabinets. With the radial, with the dado stack set up in the radial arm saw, this is really easy work to get all this done. And then I'm adding a rabbit on the back, which is where the backer will go. Since my stack was in the radial arm, so I usually cut this with the radial, uh, the dado stack. But all I did was make um, two cuts and it removed a little square chunk out of the back, sent it through the table saw um, face down and then uh, face on the side there. And it removes, you could see a little piece of wood enough for my backer. So I'm going through this pretty quickly. This is not an instruction guide for how to make cabinets. I wanted you to be able to get an idea of how I did it without being a full-fledged instruction video. So this wasn't super long. This is pretty easy construction. And then I could cut my inner, inner portions. Like I said, all this is based. I think these were about 15 inches wide. I could um, dry fit everything together to put it in the closet. In um, all homes, nothing's gonna be super square. When you do a built-in, you realize that the most. But um, in my experiences, closets especially, they do not have the same sort of um, requirements as other parts of the house is a nice way of putting it. So if anything's gonna be off square, it's gonna be a closet. So I dry fitted those together to make sure they would fit and then I could glue them together, you saw. And then for the facing of this, I usually use like tongue and grooves or something more structural to do the faces. But like I said, this is a really small cabinet. I was doing this pretty quickly while working on other projects. So all I did was cut some half inch pine into strips and then size it down and, and trim out the face that way. That just covers up the plies. I prefer to do it this way over edge banding because I just, I hate edge banding so much. And then I could fit those two cubbies into place. You see how off level this is, that will be fixed before they're permanently attached. And then I could do the other side as well. These back spacers are because I wanted these to go up to the underside of the shelf. In the original closet, they had trimmed out in, um, with about one by threes in order to put the shelves. So this um, bypasses that and goes up to the bottom shelf, which is why I have those spacers there. And then I could stain the floor. You could do a complete remodel and completely rip everything out, but I tried to do a remodel without completely reinventing the wheel. So I kept all that upper spacing in place, even though it wasn't truly accurate. Then I just cut a blank for the threshold. This is three quarter inch plywood. I made sure it fit nice in place. And then I'm basically doing an inlay in here. I'm making a design on my laser cutter. This is 16th inch oak veneer. 
and then I could stain the negative space or stain the positive space however you want your design to go and then leave the other one blank or you could stain those as well if you're using two contrasting colors and then reassemble it. So I've learned with this one because there were multiple trial runs of this. The bigger the design was easier to do for these thresholds so that's why this is a little bit more of a thicker design. I have done a trial run of this months ago when I was testing one of the lasers. I really like the way it looked especially with this black stain. It's, it's a nice color stain that creates a really nice contrast between the black and the oak but it also still shows all the grain, which I like. It's not gonna be the same as using a paint. And then I have this edge detail, which was basically, I completely mismeasured the threshold and I was off by three quarters of an inch on both sides. So I had to make a little edge detail, which is just an extension of the design. It looks very intentional once it's, once it's done, but it initially was a mistake. So then you see I could go through and add all of my pieces. As soon as you add glue, which has water in it, to these thin pieces of veneer, it wants to start bowing. So I work very meticulously, very slowly, which is something I'm not the best at. You can see I'm taping it as I go so that these pieces can't curl up on me. So I let that set up overnight. I could come in the next day and take all of the, the tape off. I'm putting a clear coat on this. This is a high performance water-based clear coat. I, I like this one. It doesn't really um, change the color of the, the, the piece, which I, which I do like sometimes. And then I didn't film it, but you could see that there, I cut some rabbits out of the edges, and that is just to add some of these thin pieces of mahogany. I'm working, I was working on a mahogany project at the same time as this, so I had a ton of scrap laying around. Just put a little 15 degree angle on the strips. It just kind of um, smooths the transition between the floor and the threshold a little bit. I was gonna still have to add a little bit of a spacer onto the bottom of the door, even with this added thickness of the threshold, but I was happy with uh, how this turned out. So then I just went through and re-added the trim. This was pretty easy because the corners were already coped, so I just used their cope corners. I cut them down to size and I mitered the edges. Because of the threshold, you see I had to make little um, chunks in the front in order to cover that. It does go onto the threshold a little bit. I didn't mind that, so that is how I decided to, to finish all that off. And then I painted all of it, which I didn't film, but um, it, you can get the gist of things that are painted. And I, so I had all that covered and I could then take all this tape off and that's basically the bottom and I could start working on the door. Now, like I said, the, the catalyst for the design of the door was the closet itself. It, it smelled terrible and especially in the summertime when old smells are kind of um, re-livened by, by the humidity, it really just had an unpleasant odor. So I wanted some breather holes in here because linen closets in general are small stuffy spaces and I don't care how many cedar bags you put in there, I always find that they eventually just start to smell. So I had permission to get um, as creative with this as I wanted. So I decided to take the panels out of these doors. If you've ever made a door or taken apart a door, these hardwood doors are really nice quality. They're put together with mortise and tenons. I knew I could take that trim off the front you saw by using an oscillating tool, pop out the panels, and then I'm just gonna use oak panels in its place. I was a little nervous about losing the raised panel look, but the design completely disguised the fact that it's no longer a raised panel. So that's all I did. I just removed that trim carefully with an oscillating tool. I popped out the raised panels. Um, I cut uh, negatives out of this plywood and then I could cut my design. Now um, I put a YouTube short on here. I had many, many, many iterations of this design. The big problem was I needed a fair amount of negative space, which was hard to find online because a lot of these patterns I purchase just don't have the skill set to make stuff like this in light burn yet. So I had to ha I I had a pattern that I had already purchased, and I basically had to go through and just rearrange it and shrink it a little bit in order to get that negative space. If too much was cut out of this, I would have two issues. It wouldn't be super structural 
and you'd be able to see into the closet way too much, which I didn't want to happen. I wanted it to be a design, but still masking what was inside the closet. So you can see I just designed this system on the laser in order to slide this panel because it was obviously not wide enough to cut all of these. So I just had alignment marks on my plywood, alignment marks on these two slides I had, and I could just slide it into three sections and cut it. Um, this laser also has a camera which was very helpful for aligning it and I was able to get it pretty well. The bottom panel has three sections as well, and then this top part. So you can see this one ha was a little bit skinnier than the other ones, so I could start at that first alignment mark and get the pattern perfect. So that worked out pretty well. The other nice thing about this pattern, like I said, it wasn't continuous. It was a continuous pattern, and I had to perfectly align each, each um, section. That would have been a little bit harder. And then I, I primed these and painted these. I wanted the inner part that's left black from the laser to stay. Um, I liked that detail. So I was really careful with how I applied the paint. I didn't apply a lot of pressure so that it didn't strip through those holes. I could put my three panels back in the door and reapply the trim. Removing this trim does not um, compromise the structure of the door at all. Like I said, these inner portions are more just intended into the side, this trim is not going to make any difference taking it in or taking it out. So if you're concerned about that, um, it's not really much to worry about. And then I just put that trim back where it was, I reattached it, put a little bit of caulk on all of this. This is the back side obviously, so that if there were any problems it would be hidden. And then I could start assembling all this. I, I sanded real well and, and uh, spray painted the knob black so it matches a little bit more the theme that I'm going for. Um, time will tell how long this black spray, spray paint will hold up. I might end up just replacing the whole assembly, but for now it's going to work. And then I wanted to sign on it. Um, I have this laser, they're fun to play around with. The nice thing about the laser is it can cut things all day and I don't have to worry about it. All the test cuts for the door, it wasn't extremely time consuming for myself because the mistakes were made on the laser. So I just designed this, I modified an image I found online. I made this in a couple layers so it was a little bit thicker and I stained the, the lettering so that it would pop and then once again very lightly you could see I'm using a paper towel to remove as much excess paint off the roller as possible. Very lightly painted the top so that I had a white top with black lettering. Did the same thing did the same thing for the design. Um, I filmed it a little bit too wait, late, but I painted the background light, white, and then I could go through and add black to the top to make that design pop. I super glued the whole thing together. Like I said, it's two layers, and then I could put that in place. And this is pretty much the finished closet. This entire hallway is getting all new trim, going to be painted, the floor is going to be refinished, but this closet was kind of the first the first portion of that remodel, you could see that the design goes all the way through, but when the doors close, you cannot really see what's inside. And then, like I said, all the chemicals and cleaners and, and whatnot are separated from the linens, which I really liked, created a ton of storage, and um, just looks pretty nice. And the shelves are also twice as thick. The other ones were only 12 inches. These come all the way to the front, and that is basically what that looks like. And for people that like the channel, I actually was pretty happy with how this remodel worked out. So probably next week I'm going to be releasing a short version of this. So if you've already seen this video, that one won't really be worth watching. But some people like the, those short form videos.